All right. Well, welcome back to the Planned Rambling Podcast, everybody. How's it going, dudes and dudettes? <laughs> my name is Jake, and I am joined by my friend... Dylan. Hello. And uh, we like to ramble about stuff, usually uh, related to audio-visual media. Uh, Indeed. And uh, we are very late to the party, but we are mostly planning on talking about uh, the Oscars a bit and uh, what we thought was the best stuff that we saw or played or whatever in 2018. I will probably put more of a focus on movies because I'm more focused on that myself. But, you know, no, anything goes. <laughs> but not a lot of movies. <laughs> not not quite as many. It's okay. I, I, like, I had to catch up, like, after the year had already ended. I, like, watched, like, I don't know, 10 movies from 2018 Dang. in January that I had just for some reason not bothered to go see when they were in theaters <laughs> yeah so. there's still a lot of movies that i want to catch up on and see because 2018 was a pretty good year for movies yeah. it seems as long as you're not like looking only at the big blockbusters you know also true like because there were a lot of good ones if you looked for them but definitely it's like i mean the the big movies that i it's like there was you know some marvel movies there was a Mission Impossible movie. Um, what else? What was another big movie that came out? I'm trying to remember. I mean... Infinity War? <laughs> I already said that. So, oh. Yeah. Uh, Black Panther? <laughs> um, anything made by Marvel? <laughs> yep, I said that. <laughs> I said Marvel movies. <laughs> Mission Impossible? Oh, there was a Star Wars movie, but that sucked. Star Wars? Con <laughs> it didn't suck. It just okay. wasn't hot take. Great. <laughs> right. That that's my my hot take. I I didn't like Solo that much. It was mediocre. Yeah. I it's, thought it was fine. It's which, a didn't if you're a Star Wars movie, movie and you're fine, that's not good enough. Yeah. In my opinion. I would rather a Star Wars movie be polarizing like The Last Agreed. Jedi, then be just, eh, Yeah, okay. because when it's eh, then no one talks about it. And when no one talks about it, everyone forgets it, and being forgettable is worse than being bad. True, true. See the room. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, yeah, he made a bad movie, but he made a career off of it. Too, yeah, I was going to so. say, it's been talked about ever since it was created. Yeah. I see him All pop right. up in my Twitter feed sometimes. <laughs> oh, really? I should yeah. follow him. That might be an interesting follow. I follow Cool Cat on Twitter, so oh, that's really? probably why. <laughs> <laughs> but, All uh, right, so where do you want to start with this? Well, I feel like maybe we should first? talk about the Oscars, just because it, right. it literally just happened. And of I course, didn't you know, watch we the couldn't Oscars. be bothered to, <laughs> you know... <laughs> actually do this before the oscars but you know yeah. that that just gives us another thing to talk about right exactly so. exactly <laughs> but i watched most of or at least like maybe half of the oscars it sounded like it wasn't nearly as long as normal and yet the show was still what three hours yeah they they dedicated to keeping the show to around three hours which honestly was a, like a big uh, plus Still for me like, yeah instead of it being like what six or something like yeah normally it's it's well over four so at least honestly, four hours usually i think five them not six. having a host probably helped with that because how ironic like, is that right we didn't have to have like five or six jimmy kimmel monologues and him trying to do something funny that like oh uh, we, we, uh, we've got a kid and we're gonna do the Lion King thing with him or something. Oh my god, seriously. <laughs> or Ellen, and she's like, oh, we bought everybody pizza! Look, everybody, we got pizza! Uh, I still kind of wonder what would have been if Kevin Hart had done it, but, you know, yeah, we'll never know. I heard someone suggest, um, Whoopi Goldberg, which, which I think 
would be a good. That could idea. have been interesting. Yeah, I like. She her. could have done a good job. Yeah, the only the only uh, person on the View that I I think I might actually take seriously. <laughs> yeah, I've never watched that show. <laughs> I barely have time to watch good TV shows that aren't about reality and stuff like that that I <laughs> like to escape with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I hate those kind of shows. I know. I mean, I'm a I'm a huge criticizer of reality television in general. So Oh, same. My yeah. wife, Lexi, she watches the The Bachelor and The Bachelorette and just all the shows associated with that. Oh, but see, those she, are fun to she watch. She does it she does it pretty ironically, <laughs> yeah, for the most you gotta part. Like, because of that. Like they're just so terrible and so <laughs> obviously scripted. You gotta get into that. how stupid it is. Oh yeah, like, absolutely. I, but the I people remember. that make me sad are the ones that like think that that is real, and I'm just like, eh. And they get invested. Oh, it's not though. I want them to end up together. Yeah, and it's like that's not gonna happen. Ninety nine percent of the time. I I remember uh, one of the last seasons that I watched because I used to just watch it because my family would watch it, and I lived at home, and so I was like, well, I guess I'm gonna. I guess I'll have this. to endure this. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and there was this part where they like brought them out to a desert, and uh-huh. there was a bed in the middle of the desert. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and totally. like one girl goes and talks with the guy, and she talks shit about the other girl, and then, <laughs> and then the other girl Welcome talks with the, the guy, <laughs> and she finds out that she talked shit about her, and then yep. she goes back, and they're both sitting on the bed in the middle of the desert. And and the girl turns to the other one and says, I know what you did. <laughs> <laughs> I I oh, died laughing when I saw God. that. And then, like, he had to pick one of them. And then they the two of them uh, flew away in a helicopter. And they just show the other girl just sitting on the bed in the middle of a desert like she got left there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, it was amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, if you watch them ironically, it's just so much more fun. <laughs> and it's kind of bad, though, because, like, when you do, even when you watch it ironically, you kind of, like, get into it, and you still yeah. know everybody's names. And because stuff it's like a that. narrative. It's, and you're I just mean, like, yeah, exactly. Like, it's, they're telling a story. Even, like, even if there is any reality to any of it, like, a lot of it is orchestrated and planned to, like, yeah. play out a certain way, so... Philip DeFranco made me laugh one night, one time when he was talking about it casually on one of his shows. And he was like, you know, that show where they, where they have a billion women on to talk to this guy. And then he chooses one at the end and they live happily ever after. And then it was like a jump cut. And he's like, almost never. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yup. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but, uh... Uh, it's great. Uh, we were talking about the Oscars, right? We were. I don't know how we got on that. <laughs> but hey, you know the title of the show. You know what you signed up for. <laughs> I mean, I guess that kind of shows like, I mean, the Oscars have never been that entertaining to watch, you know? No. It's a pretty, it's kind of a boring show. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, that's part of why I would I'm I want them to focus more on just handing out the awards, like. Oh because... yeah, because that's what everyone's there for. Nobody cares about the banter in the middle. Yeah, and like the, the acceptance part, speeches no are honestly probably the most entertaining part. Right. Like, Spike like, Lee well, giving and... his when they won best adapted screenplay for Black I Klansman heard. was was a was a moment. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, and um, there was one part too that like. Uh, I don't even know what it was for. I just saw the gif online, but they went, I think it was when they went up to announce that black Panther had won like the Oscar for um, original screenplay or whatever it was. What was, what was the Oscar that black Panther, uh, won, for again? Black Panther won three Oscars, right? It won best original score, original score. And it won costumes best as well. Right. And I don't remember yeah. what the other one was. I think I missed that. Um, but yeah. And, but like Chris Evans went up to announce one of them. Or whatever, and he saw the sheet and just did like the slightest fist bump, you know, like while he was up there, right before it was announced <laughs> when he saw it for the first time. Like he was just like, yeah, and he's like, oh shit, I have to be partial. <laughs> like, and it's just like it, it's it's the moments like that that are just so fun. Yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I wish that that was all of the Oscars, you know. Right. Exactly. But <laughs> apparently, I, I saw someone on Twitter um, who was there 
notes that everybody's asking me what Spike Lee said when the TV bleeped him out. <laughs> oh. And and it was uh don't turn on that motherfucking clock. <laughs> <laughs> Because he had a speech to make. So. Yeah, no kidding. That's awesome. Yeah. What a baller, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah I, I, I need to see some... more of his movies. I, I don't... I've heard good things. I mean, he's there, been around for a while. There was a controversy with him in general, though, this year, wasn't there? With At the Oscars? I just, controversy with him? Yeah, I thought there was a controversy with something uh, at the Oscars. Maybe it was just that. But... I don't know. I mean, he might have like been one of the people that spoke out about the when the Oscars were going to not air cinematography and lighting on TV. Oh, that's right. I remember hearing something about along those lines as well. That maybe that's it. I know that I, just... I, I saw um, Alfonso Cuaron, I think. And He's the guy. Guillermo del Toro. Directed Both Roma, like right. talking about that. Yeah. Okay. He also directed Gravity. And, right. And uh, the third Harry Potter movie, the best one. And, uh, uh, the fourth Harry Potter movie would like to have a word with you, <laughs> as would the first. The Goblet of Fire? Yeah, man. Really? The tournament is fun. <laughs> it's just Did so you fun. put your name in the Goblet of Fire, Harry? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. Love I love that part. <laughs> I love Dumbledore, man. The Anyways. comparing the book to the movie scene video. Like, I love oh, that. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he whispered and then cuts to the movie. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know. I Anywho, really like the third one, but I really like the third one too. It's a great movie for sure. I just, I mean, I like all of them a lot. So yeah, and uh, oh sad. yeah, I think I, I'm pretty sure he was also the person that directed Children of Men. Um. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I think so, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, I was happy to see him get best director and uh and it was cool like he was walking off the stage with Guillermo del toro with his arm over his shoulder <laughs> and they're like yeah you know buddying up. buddy buddy yeah, yeah. that's and, awesome and when, and, <laughs> and the the announcer lady that came up to say all the nominees before they gave out the award you know said alfonso cuaron <laughs> and, and i was like is that how you pronounce his name have I been saying it wrong this whole time? And then Guillermo del Toro handing out the award, he's like, I can say his name correctly. Alfonso Quiron. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, lol. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Oh. Those poor Oscar those the poor people that have to announce the Oscars. Because then you get people like Alfonso Quiron and then Guillermo del Toro, if you've ever like <laughs> if you've never read his name or said his name before, like it's just <laughs> feels bad <laughs> yeah uh, but uh i mean i don't know like the best picture was green book and right i didn't i haven't seen green book i i didn't Neither see a number I. of the nominees but but I, it has vigo mortensen and mahershala ali and i do like both of them and it's inter it's always true. interesting to see uh vigo mortensen come out of hiding i yeah. always forget <laughs> that he exists and then he makes something and it's usually good Right. I think the only other thing I've seen him in outside of Lord of the Rings was The Road, um, which the was road. a very uh, heavy movie, heavy to take. Oh, um, I bet. But uh, With a name like The Road. <laughs> I, I personally, I mean, I did see Roma and I saw The Favorite, and I thought that those two were really quite excellent in, in their own ways. Um, right. Right. And, like, every technical aspect of them was, like, on point. Um, well, you know, I saw Black Panther, so my bias says that that should be Best Picture winner. Clearly. You know, in a way... The only one that I saw. <laughs> if they were to vote based on cultural relevance, that one probably should have won. But, uh, Good point. But, I don't know. I mean, it's weird. Like, it's like trying to figure out what the Oscars will choose is kind of hard sometimes. And sometimes it's right. very predictable. <laughs> well, and especially just since the whole thing, like we all like, it's pretty common knowledge nowadays that the Oscars are just like whoever dedicated the most money to their campaign, you know, to, <laughs> yeah. to kind of, which is just kind of lame. 
Yeah. Just knowing that, but it's like I I only give a shit about the Oscars because I care about movies, and I like right. I want exactly, and you want the best movies things to get, to get recognized. They deserve. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And like I know that you know people will watch it, and then maybe because they watched it, they'll watch the movies that they wouldn't have seen otherwise. And that's one of the best parts about the Oscars is is just the recognition that it gives. Because like I feel mm-hmm. like if you're into media at all. Even if you don't watch the Oscars, everyone looks at like who the nominees were and who won. You know, it's like I mean, like I like Mm -hmm. I, for example, I love movies and games and stuff like that, but I don't usually watch the ceremonies. But I will look and see like what won Best Picture or what won Game of the Year, you know, stuff like that. Right. And and then I'm like, oh, I've either played that or seen that or I should play that or see that, you know, like I. Mm -hmm. Because if it was good enough to get recognized there, then clearly, you know, it's worth something. And it's not to say that Mm -hmm. the Oscars are bad, like, they choose bad movies or anything, like, crazy like that to to win Best Picture. It's just that... Not always, but sometimes. (laughs) Maybe sometimes, yeah. Like, uh, I I mean, I I haven't seen it, but uh, they were, they're, like, notorious for uh, giving Best Picture to Crash. Mm -hmm. I know everybody says that's a bad movie. I have never seen that actually, but I remember the whole Twelve Years a Slave controversy, and I think Twelve really Years a Slave was a weird was situation. Kind of like meh. Like I, I don't think that it didn't deserve it, but it was yeah. weird because Gravity won every other award that year. Well, and just the fact that they voted for it, and it came out that like some of the people that even voted for it hadn't seen it, right. and it's like okay, that's. Yeah. Really, like <laughs> I, I think I remember it was like two people, that yeah, were outed for that, and and they were like cited as saying that they voted for it because they thought it was the right thing to do. Yeah, which <laughs> is just silly. You I'm know, just like cringe. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> like, is it so hard to watch the the movies that you're gonna nominate for the apparently? <laughs> Yeah, apparently. I don't know how like that could be such an issue, but um, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, though, the only thing that really mattered, you know, did happen, and Spider Verse won Best Animated Feature. I so. know. I want to see it so bad, and I'm so happy about it. So bad. <laughs> because so like, one of the I, things that I would have popped of blood vessel if incredibles 2 won instead <laughs> oh i know yeah i'm i'm sure i mean but, pixar uh, did win the best animated short but you know did they okay so was it the short before incredibles the dumpling yeah. one yeah it was that That one. one was so weird and yet it <laughs> makes me so emotional when i watch it. it's so weird i felt like, good I though because ex- there was another entry on there that i had seen it was um uh-huh. it was uh what was it called? It was about a girl who wanted to become an astronaut, and I saw it on YouTube, and it was great. Um, oh, really? Well, I'll have to look it up now, just because I need to need to shout it out. It's right <laughs> on YouTube, so um, best animated short nominees. <laughs> Uh, oh, one small step. Oh, I heard. I've I have heard of that. Yeah, that's a that's a good, you know, hit you right in the feels. Animated short. Right. It's really cool. But um. But yeah, Spider Verse winning was like the one thing that I was like, please, if if this world, if we're in the correct timeline, <laughs> Spider Verse will win best animated feature. <laughs> Ironic in a movie talking about parallel universes. Exactly. That comparison. <laughs> um, uh. But uh, yeah, I I've heard nothing but good things about Spider Verse. But unfortunately, well, I say unfortunately very loosely here. But it <laughs> did it did come out the same week that my daughter was born. So I haven't I never got to go to the theater to see it. But what's yeah. good is like you as you know my in laws where we're currently living. We have a theater room, and my in-laws still have old-school Netflix. Um, 
which is like, if you remember before Netflix mm -hmm. was Netflix that it is now, you could order movies through the main. And uh, <laughs> they still do that. They do still do that, believe it or not. Like they actually have it mailed to their house. Yes, precisely. <laughs> so why I asked them about that yet? But I kind of. I mean, I guess if it's something that they don't the have the stream like and for something like Venom, which I still haven't seen yet. Also, I think <laughs> or I... Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> I I think it's crazy that uh, Netflix still even does that. I know, right? Like you, I they must be still making some kind of money from it. I guess so. so. Or you would think they would uh, get rid of it. Yeah, as long as it's not like... It's either somehow, you know, making them money, or it's just not enough of a dip in their profit for them to feel like it's worth removing the service. Oh, yeah. So You would think. If enough people actually like using it. So, who knows? It's not something I've ever done. <laughs> right. If I want to go and rent a physical movie, I'll usually just go to the red box or or like Yeah. And even then like if I don't do that, I'll usually just digitally rent it somewhere like because of, of convenience. So cuz having like having to wait for it to come in the mail. Yeah. That's... You get know. you get to have a child, you become more patient. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I can wait <laughs> a couple days. Yeah, I mean, I'm usually I've never rented something through mail before. I usually, you know, I'm I've bought stuff plenty of times, but like, I feel like renting. I I think about it differently, but but you know, whatever floats your boat. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I'm not paying for it, so <laughs> for now, I, I, uh, I, and like I said, I don't even know if it's in the cards yet. It's just an idea that I've had, but uh, right, but yeah, we can maybe make it happen because, like I said, I've got some movies that I want to see, and Spider Verse mm -hmm. is the is absolutely the one that I've been told by multiple people that uh, I need to see. Yes, this is true. Uh... And I'm pretty sure it's still in theaters right now. So, Is it really? Yeah. Maybe I'll have to make something work then. Maybe it maybe it uh does does what most things do when it comes to the Oscars and like they make a resurgence back in theaters when they're talked about again. Yeah. Like that's how Lexi and I saw La La Land was La La Land was in the picture for uh for or was picture. in was in yeah was in the best picture nominees and it was already out of theaters and then it came back in mm -hmm. because of the Oscar buzz and we were able to see it in theaters which was awesome that was a great theater experience that movie is cinematography is excellent oh yeah but yeah they but they yeah. they've been doing that for the movies um like they've been all the Oscar nominees have been in theaters uh, at the AMC near us definitely um, at least and I do like so. AMC quite a bit. <laughs> yeah oh i saw spider verse and dolby i know i'm jealous that's awesome <laughs> i haven't seen a dolby movie oh, you're gonna laugh at me the so only funny. dolby movie that i've seen is uh trans three i think it was three <laughs> and it was like right when dolby first came out you know so it wasn't probably it probably wasn't even as refined as it is now but was i it enjoyed three? it it was i, I don't I don't remember if the Dolby Theater was there that long ago. Maybe it was four then, which is even worse. <laughs> <laughs> um, I haven't watched one since the third movie, so like, oh. yeah. But uh, oh, yeah, seeing Spider Verse and Dolby is cool because it's got a lot of like great sound design and and music and right and stuff involved in it, so. It just, and that's one of the things that, like, when I first saw the trailers for that, it just stood out so much. Like, I just mm -hmm. was like, oh, that looks beautiful. Like, it's such a unique animation style, and it's it seemed like it was a good combination of funny, action-packed, and yet, like, had its own unique art style and story and stuff like that. And just, that just, and I'm already a superhero shill, so, <laughs> yeah. so you know that part jives with me well. Yeah, so. it, I, I mean, I don't want to say everything about it right now, but 
but it's right. uh, oh yeah i don't want to watch it <laughs> it's uh it captures the spirit of spider-man while also offering something new you know definitely which you know we kind of i mean as far as movies go like we kind of needed that oh for sure something a little bit more refreshing in that realm and it's like we'll, uh, and it's also we'll that you it. don't have to you know it, you don't have to have seen anything else to be able to enjoy it right so it's not like Which part of the universe you know? in, in our world nowadays yeah where everybody's trying to be the next marvel and create a cinematic universe yeah Although it does seem like that that model is already starting to slow down, which is mm-hmm. good. Um, like Universal finally gave up on theirs. Finally, I say after like two movies, um, the Universal monsters. Or no, well, actually, only one, one of them was official. Right? You know? Yeah, they only came out with the the with, Dracula uh, one was supposed to be the start, and then they were like, ah, eh, and then everyone no. hated it. Yeah, and they're like, ah, eh, no, no, that's its own thing. And then they did the mummy, and they announced it. Like, they have the Universal logo, and then it turns around, and it says, Dark Universe. Ugh. (laughs) Yeah, I heard about that. I I heard some some people talking about it, about just saying, like, really? You... I don't think you've earned the logo yet, you know? (laughs) (laughs) You can't uh, claim a universe before it even exists. Yeah, exactly. You made (laughs) one movie. Let's uh, let's slow down. Maybe after you make two good movies, maybe then we'll talk. yeah, Yeah. (laughs) The Mummy. Which I still haven't even seen The Mummy, the, but I, I heard cheese. it was okay, but not great. <laughs> it, it was pretty mediocre. Yeah. Um, did you hate yourself for watching it? Uh, I almost did, but... Uh, almost? <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it, uh, it didn't help that quite, I had, but I had just there. seen the massive twist in Season 2 of Attack on Titan... Like literally, oh, like a half an hour before so, I went to go see that movie. So your standards were a little high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at that point. Yeah. That and then I was just like, Ugh, "Wow." You did that to yourself. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my back to Spider-Man. Sort of my. This is kind of a teaser for later, but unfortunately, I didn't get to experience the Spider-Man movie of that year, but I did play the Spider-Man game on PS4. Oh and yeah. How was it's that? very good. Well, uh, because uh we'll I don't have it. a PS4. Yeah. So. I, I don't either. I just borrowed a friends to play it. And I'm so glad that I did, but we will talk more mm-hmm. about that if we want to. And I mean, unless you want me to talk about it now and we can I think move our, you, uh, you move probably might as well media. just talk about that now. Okay. So, Moving into our favorite media of 2018, I'll start, like I said, with Spider-Man on PS4. That game is so good. It, in my opinion, in my personal opinion, and this might be controversial, especially since I haven't seen Into the Spider-Verse yet, but he is the pinnacle Spider-Man that we have ever had. Movies, games, TV shows, period. Like, and I'm not, that's not to say that, like, his, that game is the best spider-man thing period but i think that the voice actor that plays peter parker the portrayal of peter parker in general and how he is in this story and just like how he interacts with the world and the other characters in it are just it's just the best version of spider-man that we have i i think personally he's Mm -hmm. the perfect combination of just caring peter parker perfectly balanced quippiness spider-man you know like where it's not over the top and in your face about it and it's just it's so good and it has a very very heartbreaking but also inspiring main story with very interesting villains as spider-man's which are spider-man's strength honestly is his villains um and Mm. yeah it's just very very good if anyone has the opportunity to play it and hasn't yet please do yourself a favor and do it because it is so good. Uh, I guess I might have to do that. Yeah. Are you saying like, it's better than Spectacular Spider-Man? Honestly, yeah. I and I love I loved Spectacular Spider-Man. The thing that I hated about it the most is that you told me about that it, it ended, and, <laughs> and that there's not yeah, and that it ends, or more like yeah, it stops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It just quits right as it was like really starting to ramp up too, but. uh but no, I yeah, I just think it's it's pretty incredible, and it's very like it's it's it doesn't happen very often for 
I, I okay. Full disclosure, I cry a lot in movies. I'm very emotional when it comes to that kind of thing. Like it doesn't take much to get me. But mm. when it comes to games, like even though I will feel emotionally for the characters that I'm playing and stuff like that, I don't always like cry about stuff like that. Spider Man mm. made me like cry like a little girl, like like a little baby. <laughs> I was just sitting there, tears streaming down my face at the very end. For happy and sad reasons, but I won't spoil anything. But yeah. it is so good. <laughs> hmm. but, I guess I'll have yeah, to borrow someone's play PS4. PS4. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I've had very few games do that kind of thing to me, like where I feel very, very strongly, you know, by the end of it. Um, I think, like, probably the closest, like, or like the most. I guess the emotional I've ever gotten with a game was was uh, probably the end of Red Dead Redemption One. Oof! And um, that's a hard one. I don't think I cried at that, but it definitely drained me emotionally. I was just like, yeah. "Oh, ooh!" And The Last of Us. Oh yeah, The, the Last, Last of Us. Nutty. I think peaks like that's like the top for me of a video game really getting into me. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, and it's because The Last of Us has, like, the perfect combination. Like, it has the tear jerkiness at the beginning that makes you want to cry there. And then mm -hmm. it slowly progresses throughout the game to just show you more and more, like, just messed up shit. <laughs> yeah. and, the, and so, and each time you watch it, you're just more like, oh, oh, my, oh, my God, oh. my heart. Like, it just drains you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But. You want to know the yeah. part that like really broke me in that game? <laughs> was it the the okay spoiler alert for The Last of Us? It's a game. It came out yeah. eight years ago. If you haven't played it now, <laughs> what are you doing? For um, me. it was the part when was it eight years ago. I think it was, it was six in years 2013. Ago. Anyway. Yeah, six years ago. So, pretty, half a decade, more than half yeah. a decade. <laughs> we'll call it good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was the part where you're playing as Ellie and you're like hiding from the cannibal guys. And oh, then there's yeah. that one guy that's like trying to find you in the right. restaurant. And yeah. you're having to like sneak attack him. And then he's like about to overpower her. And, and then, uh, and then she like just destroys just, him, like repeatedly yeah. stabbing him. Yep, and uh, that and part Joel is finally nutty. finds her, and 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 he's like holding her, and he says, he says, uh, "Like I got you, baby. Girl. A, I got you, baby girl." And I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> my heart." Yeah, yeah, that one, and so that one is very emotional. But the one that like chills me, I still think the most in that scene or in that game is uh, where they're like traveling. I can't even remember their names. I think it's the little kid's name is Steve or something like that. But it's um, oh, the um, African-American like brothers that are, that they encounter and they like travel with for a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And then the kid gets bitten and doesn't say anything. And then like they try and like, and then he, they wake up the next morning and of course he's, uh, he's infected and is tr coming at Ellie. And then his brother kills him. And then just realizes what he's done and just kills himself. Like, and that part. <laughs> and then they just, just cut. <laughs> yeah. And it just cuts to black. Like, you're just set, sitting there with that emotional moment. You're just like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, I like I think I audibly looked at the screen and was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> okay, this is what I'm getting into. <laughs> that was the moment where I knew, okay, this is the kind of game that I'm playing. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, this serious. is what I'm in for. Like, I mean, even though like the the opening scene is really heavy, it's like I feel like that was the point where I was like, okay, I'm like invested and and I'm probably not going to be okay after this. <laughs> I'm probably not going to be okay, but we'll get through it. Yeah, it's <laughs> yep, for sure. Yeah. Oh. Do you uh, just so we stay slightly on the topic of it, do you have a game that you played in 2018 that you really enjoyed? Um, I know you don't play tons in the video game department, but... Oh, man. I'm trying to think if I even played a, a full game in 2018. Um, 
Oh, I played Hellblade. Oh, so yep. that was we've great. talked about Hellblade in the past. Yeah, that was a yeah. good experience. Yeah, um, Hellblade is great. Everyone should play that too if you haven't. I'm planning on playing the Resident Evil series soon. I played through 4, obviously, but I haven't played through the other ones yet. Wait, so. Resident Evil 4, do you like that game? Is... Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, possibly. Ah, just a little bit. <laughs> So much so that you can't play everything else. <laughs> but anyways. Well, so uh, Red uh, Dead Redemption 2, not good enough for you to make the... Oh, well... Okay, Red Dead Redemption 2. That's the thing. I, I'm i like a little more than two chapters in, and there's like nine more to go. And Oh, is that all? I just don't know. I just don't know if I'm like... I might have to just... I'm I'm feeling like it's one of those things where I'll like leave it for a while and then maybe come back to it one day. Right. But yeah, probably. It just sounds like I mean we've talked about this not really as much on here, but just mm -hmm. that it sounds like it's more on the tedious side to play, which is unfortunate. But yeah, I, I mean, mean it, people have been having a lot of fun with it, and I totally respect that. Yeah, I mean, there's good things about it and there's bad things about it. I just, I, I think. Personally, I can't really play it the same way I played the original, and I also think that there are things um, that get in the way of you just playing the game, like the yeah, original just, just having let you fun. Do. Yeah, like the original was a big, you know, open world with stuff to do, but it didn't have all these like tiny little tasks that you had to be managing all the time. You know, you just kind of existed in the world and played the game and did whatever you wanted. And I feel like Red Dead 2 doesn't really let you do that as much. It's right. more concerned with what it wants you to do. Um, which, you know, I guess depending on how much you like the, you know, pre-planned path that Rockstar made, you know, that could be good or bad. So. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah, and I, I don't know. What? Um, I, I'm having trouble putting this into words, but I, I think one of the things, okay, here it is. I think that that's just one of the things that Rockstar games are so great for is their just weirdness, you know, and kind of their <laughs> like, maybe not jankiness, maybe that's the wrong word, but like, just kind of their like weird things that you can do, you know, like where in, in Red Dead Redemption one try like where they would have like the occasional like uh like when they had like the the citizen with the donkey face you know just running around um i don't remember and, that what do you, oh, wait, what man, do you that mean was hilarious i'm pretty sure that was in the game like there was a there was a citizen in uh that would occasionally it was a bug that would occasionally appear <laughs> inside of uh inside of a city that was just walking around, but it had a, a donkey face instead of a human <laughs> face. And, like, oh that's God. hilarious, you know? <laughs> but, like, where... <laughs> that's amazing. Right? I never like, saw where that. Patch culture is now, like... I mean, they can patch... I mean, obviously, there's always going to be some sort of bug. But, like, back then, they just left it. They thought it was funny. Yeah. But now, it's like, that would probably never happen because they want... Like, everything is, needs to be so polished and stuff like that, but... <laughs> blizzard <laughs> yeah uh, excuse me sorry wait what just happened uh. <laughs> <laughs> but we love their games yes i just but. think that they're a little bit too tight-lipped about things sometimes but you know i i still want want them to do well you know? yeah no kidding as long as they're don't not, we all you know, blizzard like i i like the idea of blizzard of what blizzard could be but yeah that's a whole other thing that's a really big can that's of worms a, that's a whole other thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh um how has uh because i haven't been playing it but how right. have you been enjoying anthem i haven't played it very much at all just because that's how the timings worked out and uh this is yeah. gonna sound like it's really bad towards anthem but it's more plus towards this game but I've been playing a buttload of Apex when I get online. 
oh, and yeah. just been really loving it. But um, I do really enjoy what I have played of Anthem, and I understand the controversy around it. And I think that Anthem just came out at an unfortunate time where, like, there's a lot of uh, anger towards the games of service model as a whole. And people are just kind of tired with uh, the whole, like, release a game now, fix it later type mentality. But, I mean, as far as my personal experience goes, like, I haven't really had any bugs whatsoever. The game runs perfect on my PC. I enjoy the combat and the gunplay and... And stuff like that and i but i haven't even gotten to the end game yet so i haven't even scratched that surface so i don't mm-hmm. know if people are complaining about the end game being hollow or not but i've just kind of tried to enjoy the story for what i will and the story is interesting so far um hmm. it's a very unique world so cool but yeah i have been enjoying it it's so fun. you've been playing apex without me i have on pc <laughs> i have it <laughs> I just haven't oh, you played do? it yet because I don't want to play it by myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. D- you do not want to play it by yourself if you can avoid it. I mean, like, it's possible <laughs> for sure, but it's just so much more fun with friends. Like, it's a... Uh, mm-hmm. No, I- Apex is one of the best things to come out in a while. And I did see your tweet, which uh, made me laugh because, like, even though you hadn't played it yet and you and you mentioned that in the tweet, mm-hmm. it's completely accurate. Um, <laughs> but how, like, it just... Like, look at how Apex released... And it's a game that uh, EA really had no hand in and that the the creators of the game just kind of wanted to make and EA kind of just let them do their thing with. Yeah. And uh, it's fantastic. It's the best Battle Royale game, period. <laughs> wow. So, like, bar none. Like, there, it's... There, it's I don't even think it's close, personally. Um, I mean, I definitely think it looks better <laughs> than PUBG. The only thing is that I feel like comparing it to Fortnite is a bit different because it has a, almost a completely different games oh, play, gameplay style. You know? Absolutely. And and uh Fortnite like Fortnite's the type of thing like the reason that I don't like Fortnite personally is because the building is just too much for me. Like I don't like that. I would rather be it be about about gun skill specifically and not uh building, you know, like not have that extra mm-hmm. equation. But in yeah. my but opinion that's what makes I, Fortnite Fortnite. So. Exactly, precisely. Yeah. But I still do think that Apex has the best aspect of every Battle Royale game put into one. And it's perfect mm-hmm. for someone like you who loves Overwatch because it has like champion or legends as they're called, but with like mm-hmm. abilities and such like and stuff like that. So And from what I've heard it has really good uh, communication tools. Oh yeah. Has great communication tools and like this sounds so small, but holy shit, it is so good. But, like, one of the things that it does is if you go to pick something up, like, say, an armor piece or, like, a backpack or whatever, like, every game has, every Battle Royale game has, mm-hmm. it will tell you before you grab it. It's like, hey, you have something better than this. Don't grab this. <laughs> and and that is phenomenal. It's so <laughs> nice because it just makes everything just feel so much faster. Like, right. Yeah. Um, I mean, it seemed like Fortnite had a similar system. It's just that you had to know which color meant what. But so in this case, it's more like realistic than that game. So they'll just like have a thing pop up and tell you what you need to know. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it just yeah, like I said, it's just unbelievably user friendly. It's yeah, it's just everything about it is great. (laughs) Please, please play it. It's free. Well, we should play it sometime. We should. I have it installed. Because I love it. I, it's, it's very good. Like, I I think that you specifically would like it a lot because it's just right up your alley. Like, it has gunplay similar to Titanfall slash Call of Duty, you know, but, but with characters that have Overwatch-like uh, abilities, you know? So, right. yeah, it's just very, very good. Cool. Yeah. yeah, that was a that was a cool. I mean, did that even did that come out in 2019, or did that? Yeah, it was released okay. three, four weeks ago, three weeks ago, something like that. Yeah, and it took and, the and world it was by just storm. A, <laughs> a huge yeah. Oh yeah, and the best part too was it was um it was a Friday. Yeah, it was. It was just three weeks ago or so because I remember because it was the Friday before the Super Bowl and everyone thought that the Super Bowl it would be a Super Bowl announcement, you know. Um, right. But uh, 
Yeah, and they there was rumors about it on Friday that uh, hey, Respawn is going to release a new Titanfall like experience, um, mm-hmm. or a new and uh, it's going to be a battle royale game. And everybody kind of groaned when they heard battle royale. They're like, "Ugh, a battle royale! Like, really? We need another one of those." Mm-hmm. Um, and then they released it for free which also freaked everyone out. And it was just like, hey, it's free and it's available now. You can literally <laughs> play it right now. And everyone was like, oh, right now, eh? And <laughs> and that kind of, yeah. And it, it's, it was just very good. <laughs> so that, it's yeah, cool. maybe, maybe people should uh, just make good things and they'll be successful. <laughs> That's what I have to say about that. <laughs> true, true. Well, speaking of good things, um, yes. <laughs> Excellent. I, I know segue. how to transition. I'm just so <laughs> I'm so good at that, you know. <laughs> no. Uh the the n- next thing I just wanted to quickly uh mention was um uh TV shows. For sure. I uh didn't watch a lot of TV shows from 2018. I mean, I I watched some, but like Me not enough actually. to be like an authority on it. But I will say that, and and this will show you know that I'm I'm a, I'm a weeb, but uh, <laughs> my favorite shows that I watched or at least seasons from 2018 were uh, Daredevil season three, which we you know already talked about, uh, yes, as well as Attack on Titan season three part one. Oh, I need to watch and, the last episode. And. Uh, I will say, uh, season three of My Hero Academia was enjoyable overall, but the first half was really great. Um, yeah, that's another show that I need to watch that I've just heard nothing but good things about. And, you know, those three, you know, you probably have heard about. Everybody's already talking about them already. But if you haven't heard of it or or watched it, you should watch Violet Evergarden. Oh Violet yeah, you, you've talked about that show. Yeah, is an anime made by Kyoto Animation, who are the masters of character animation. Like they tend to focus more on small, detailed, nuanced movements in characters' faces and body language and stuff. And and it's like a thirteen-ish episode season, and it's on Netflix with sub or dub and it's a just a really like beautifully animated uh story about an interesting world with an interesting protagonist who grows and changes throughout the story and i don't want to give much away but the uh i believe it's the 10th episode i don't know a episode in the later half of the season is one of the best single episodes of probably any show I've ever seen. <laughs> wow. At least in that's, 2018, uh, but that's like some words right there. <laughs> like this like just this single episode by itself was is enough to warrant watching the show, I think. So, dang. And it's well, on Netflix, right, so then. it's like you know, it's pretty easy to to access. Right. So, would recommend. Well, then I might have to check that out. Yeah. It's might it might even be like a show that that you could watch with your wife and and her not be like, "What is this weeaboo shit?" <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that's cool. I'm going to try that out then. Yeah. I would like for her to watch more stuff like that with me, but yeah. I understand the the lack of appeal, shall I say, for her. Um, right. as someone like i mean anime can be daunting to someone who's not uh definitely well in it so. oh and it still is for me honestly yeah. like it's yeah it's uh it's just there's so much of it and i don't like all of it mm-hmm. and yeah it's just yeah it's can be difficult to get into for sure but yeah that's why i try to like I mean, I'm I'm like paying attention to what's coming out, and then I'm like picking and choosing what I think looks appealing to me, and then the stuff that I think is the best, then I'm like, hey, 
hey you you should watch this yeah definitely <laughs> and i have i i've watched uh, attack on titan and yes. i've watched death note yes and that might be it <laughs> <laughs> And you gotta, and you, but I before love both you, of them. and before you die, you gotta watch Full Metal Alchemist. Yes, so I have heard from not but... just you, but from multiple people. <laughs> it's a, it's a problematic one though, because it's like you could either watch it now and then you know raise your standards for things overall, or you could wait so that Ooh, so that it doesn't make everything life. else look worse <laughs> in comparison. <laughs> right. <So. laughs> huh pick pick your poison yeah no kidding <laughs> tv shows that oh yeah i actually have a tv show that you might not have seen that i watched in technically 2018 i think it might have been 2019 i think it was 2018 oh but uh it's called maniac it's, it's oh, also, also a Netflix right. original it has emma stone and jonah hill it only has one season right now it's only like um six episodes isn't it it's something. longer than that. I believe it's about 10, but the episodes kind of vary in length. Like there's ones that are as short as like 27 minutes, I believe, but ones that are as long as like 54, you know? Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's a, uh... oh, it's, so it's a mini series specifically, not a, um, it's just, it's a one and so done type of thing. Just be a one and done. Yeah. So, and it's 10 episodes. Yeah, so it's 10 episodes long. It's weird as shit, but it is so good. It's uh, it's just got great character work. Phenomenal, phenomenal cinematography. Um, great atmospheric feel, you know? Like, it's just, it's caught between, like, an old sci-fi movie and a common, or not an old, like an old, uh, like thriller movie and an and old thriller sci-fi and like as far as aesthetic goes like some of the sets might you remind you of something like alien you know like the original alien movie stuff like wow. that but uh but it's also set in the future kind of it's it's really <laughs> strange but it's very good it, so i guess Sounds i should tell you what it's about so pharmacists are running this uh trial uh that they're so they're doing to a pharmaceutical trial that what is supposed to do is just solve whatever problem you have like mentally um it's just a drug that people are doing that's supposed to solve your problems and the way that it does that is by like going into your subconscious to kind of like dissect your brain like not, not literally obviously um but uh to figure out exactly what is wrong and what your demons are. And it manifests them in a way that you would understand. And so sometimes that hmm. means like specific, like not real sh scenarios. Okay. Um, huh. And uh, it's interesting. Yeah. It's very, very interesting. Um, it reminds me a lot of Inception as well. Um, if that piques anybody's interest. <laughs> That does um, that does sound cool. Yeah, I really think you would like it. Like I said, ten episodes. My wife and I literally watched it in a day. <laughs> um, <laughs> we watched it uh, when I was homesick from work one day. Like it was the I think it was like the day after I had gotten back from oh, yeah. or not the day after I had gotten back, but uh, so I took two weeks off of work when my daughter was born to help my wife out and stuff like that, and. It came out in 2018. I can't remember exactly when, but uh, and uh, we watched it on December. I think it would have been like December 30th. So I barely fit it in my best of 2018. Um, but yeah, it's very good. Watch it if you can. Well, I'll have to add it to my list. Indeed. Yeah. Well, uh. Are you ready to move on to the uh, movies section? Yes. Because I, I do not have a lot in this category. I will be mostly listening to you talk, but there is one that you know that I am particularly passionate about that I will that we'll both talk about when we get there. But I will let you go first. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I uh, so here's the deal. 
I have an Instagram page that I've been running since 2013. And I'm not as passionate about it anymore. Uh, I kind of find it to be a chore to maintain these days a lot of the time. Right. But, um, but I still felt like I needed to do my annual best of the year countdown thing that I do every year on the page. It's like right. maybe one last big thing that I do for the page before I maybe rebrand it into something different, you know, um, like more representative of just myself so, and, and the things that I'm pursuing. But what did you do? I have a list of my favorite movies from 2018 and I did na- and I did number them in order from you know really you numbered from, them from nice. from number 10 to 1 so but I also have honorable you actually mentions. did a top 10 huh yeah I I decided to narrow it to 10 um but I have honorable mentions um so for the honorable mentions movies i've got game night oh i love that movie really, that was one of my favorites really yeah. funny that, I mean, good good enjoyable movie yes and with one scene in particular that is so great <laughs> it's a it's a edited to look like a one take scene for anyone who hasn't seen the movie oh, and yeah. it's very awesome <laughs> <laughs> not something that you would expect from like a a comedy movie about board games <laughs> yeah there was a lot of actual like effort put into the uh like cinematography and editing exactly in that movie it was surprising and uh and then i have the ballad of buster scruggs uh have which is a coen brothers uh netflix movie that is a uh collection of six short stories that are all westerns oh okay and the first one is like the one that it's named after and it's more um comedy centric than most of the other ones but uh right it's a it's a good watch i would huh. i thought i found it to be really enjoyable uh roma i have roma in my honorable mentions i thought that movie wow. was really you quite... must really love your top 10 that's <laughs> just an honorable mention well, I mean, the Oscars don't choose the same movies that I do. So. Also true. <laughs> Most of the time. But, uh, yeah, Roma is worth watching for sure, especially since it's on Netflix. I watched it with headphones on, which I would recommend doing. Or at least, like, if you have a good sound system, um, that will help too, because it does have good... Uh, which we do, thankfully. It does have good sound design. Um, and, like, it has things where it'll, like have the audio change directionally depending on where something is within the frame. Oh, that's pretty neat. Yeah. Um, uh, you were never really here. Uh, starring Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, it's, it's a dark movie, uh, about a guy who, who, uh, you know, does dirty work for people basically, but he's like, He's like kind of a good guy, but he's kind of fucked up. Um, huh. And it's a it's a more of a character study kind of movie, but right. it's really well done. Uh, a Star Is Born. I, Another honorable mention, really. Yes. Yes. Uh, Man, I am excited to hear your top ten. <laughs> I really enjoyed A Star Is Born, but I, I I it was really close to making my top ten, but I I kind of decided that there were other things that stuck with me more. Um, For sure. Then uh, And then 8th Grade, directed by Bo Burnham. Right. I really want to see that as well. It's a... It's a and, and maybe this one didn't make my top 10 because it's really well made and good, but it's uncomfortable to watch. <laughs> yeah. It's like and cringe. Because the it movie. reminds you of 8th Grade, right? Isn't that the whole like, oh my God, kind of man. idea? It's and just so like the accurate. awkwardness and yeah exactly yeah. it's like it's painful it's it's really painful to watch like right the way that kids just can't seem to communicate their feelings to each other you know oh <laughs> like, yeah because they can't at yeah. all 
at least back then. I mean, and back then, and it's even like at young. that age. And it's even weirder now because it. I mean, it's it takes place in today, you know. Right. Which is a, even way more different than when I was going to school with like yeah, the internet and phones and worse. all that. You know. Yeah. No. Everybody's so. still not nearly as present. Yeah. For different reasons. Exactly. So that one's definitely worth it, worthwhile. Um, then I have Annihilation, which uh, oh, I I liked. I thought it was really good. Um, I I kind of found some of the story beats to be predictable. Um, I kind of saw a lot of things coming, but I still thought it was a pretty cool high sci, um, high science fiction movie. You know, you don't mm-hmm. get a lot of those. Um, and it definitely. Uh, it had one of my favorite performances of the year. Um, it was Gina Rodriguez, I think, was her name. She was really good in that movie. Um, huh. I thought she stood out. And and there's a particular scene with a bear. Uh, I'll just say that. <laughs> but, uh, is it a real bear or is it a mystical world bear? Uh, yeah, kind of, yeah. But it's yeah. it's 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 a it's a very intense scene. Um, it'll it'll you know, send a chill down your spine. Interesting. But, uh, but yeah, it didn't quite, you know, I thought there were a lot of great things about it, but there were certain things that held it back for me. Um, then blind spotting. This one was probably the closest to making it to my top 10. Um, right. It's so close, but I got to make it 10. So, right. (laughs) Blind spotting is really, really good. Um, it's a, and it's more like based on a realistic situation uh, with a character, you know, living in a what was it, uh, Brooklyn? I think it's Brooklyn. Oh, okay. Um, in New York. And his friend, and uh, it's it's kind of it it definitely deals with the subject matter of of police brutality and. Um, Oh, what's the word or the phrase? Um, racial profiling. Oh, okay. And things like that. Um, but uh, there's these uh, actors also have got bars. So just saying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, I was I was actually, I was actually uh, impressed by their uh, lyricism in their raps. Huh. But uh, that's pretty sweet. But it's really a good drama story that. Uh, I think is very relevant today to Definitely. a lot of things. And last but not least, here's the part where people will will uh, swing one way or another. I have in my honorable mentions Black Panther. Nope, I think that's fair. I thought Black Panther was really, really good for a number of reasons. And I yes. really enjoyed it. Um, I think it it's definitely like a significant movie for what it, you know, means culturally. Um, and I, I think it's a, a perfect like segue movie into infinity war. Like it really worked well as that. I feel like, Oh, for sure. I really like black Panther. I, and honestly, one of the main reasons I like Black Panther is because Michael B. Jordan is just unbelievable. Yeah, he was definitely he stole the show in that movie for sure. Yeah, the only he I mean, was one a, of the biggest problems I have with the movie is that T'Challa himself I feel like had a better character arc in Civil War. I um, and I would absolutely agree with you. Much like, more interesting in that movie than he is in his own title movie, which is yeah. kind of weird. But it was still cool, like seeing the world and. And the style and and everything definitely. and then and then when Infinity War, <laughs> I definitely like I realized after once I saw Infinity War that that soundtrack stuck with me because there was that transition where you heard the the music yeah. start dun, to dun, play dun, and, dun, and dun, I was dun, like dun, dun, I was like dun, 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 dun. <gasps> the Black Panther yeah. <laughs> I was like oh my God Wakanda is coming and then it cut to Wakanda I was like yes <laughs> yeah definitely. The MCU yeah. is finally getting like good with having memorable soundtracks, you know. Yeah. Finally, that was one of their problems: was memorable soundtracks and and like good villains, and they're I starting hope... to solve both of those finally. Yeah, I hope Captain Marvel has a good one. That'd be cool. Me too. It is in the '90s, so it's probably going to be all stuff that we love. 
Uh, so, I have an actual top ten. Give me that top ten. At number ten, I have Sorry to Bother You. And oh, I heard that movie was super weird, but good. It is, and you know, I I don't even think I would have thought it would make my top ten when I first saw it. But it's that kind of movie where it's like, it's wormed its way into my brain where I, it's like, I can't forget it. It's so weirdly memorable. And like, yeah. And I feel like that's noteworthy for, you know, that like a movie sticks with me. Like, yeah. And it's definitely unique. And, and it had a twist that just threw me off. I was like, what the fuck? Right. <laughs> And it was, but it was so like entertaining and, and, and it held my attention the whole time. Like, right. Um, and it was by a first time director, which is pretty cool. Um, so I would definitely, I, cool. and I don't really want to give anything away about it because there's like, it's just so off the wall weird, but right. <laughs> it's definitely, uh, a unique Ooh, experience. And then speaking of movies with twists, I have at number nine, Hereditary. Oh, I wanted to see that. This is a I, I really... I heard uh, that Toni Collette, like, some people were really upset that she didn't even get nominated for Best Actress. Yep, I would totally agree with that. Uh, she was phenomenal in this movie. Yeah. Um, this was just a really, like, solid horror movie. Like, it was so well done and it's not just like it's not just being a horror movie it also has like some really serious like family drama and right and uh intimate well and isn't it stuff. like doesn't it have like the classic horror movie like undertone like where there's like an underlying theme that's maybe not as obvious but like i heard in that one it was kind of like how much we can shape our kids you know and stuff like that and to, just, to a certain extent, yeah. I just heard that it had a lot yeah. of nuance, which was... I think there were a number of, of different, like, layers with that going on. Um, with different subtext to what the characters were going through. Right. But, um, and this this movie had a twist. Holy shit, they didn't have a twist that I did not see right. coming. <laughs> like, I it happened and I was like, oh my god, they went there. I can't believe they actually did that. <laughs> like, huh. And that just... Like, I think that maybe bumped it up, like, a whole point for me, you know? <laughs> like Wow. I was like, wow, you su you surprised me with that. That's saying something, um, too. And, of course, you know, yeah, it, it does. I do think it has one of the best performances of the year, too. So, um, I would definitely say. Yeah, and, 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 of course, you know, it's a, it's a scary, like, uh, disturbing horror movie, so it's not for everybody, but. You know, if oh, definitely. If you're but... into a good horror movie, this one is really well done. Uh, and Sweet. then at, at number eight, probably uh -huh. the most obscure movie on my list, I have Revenge. Ooh, um, like not the TV show with uh, no, <laughs> uh, not the ABC TV with... show. With, oh uh, man, with what's her name from Winter Soldier? Yeah, thank you. That's that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> uh. uh carter agent carter's daughter <laughs> right. or yeah right yeah <laughs> yeah not that one <laughs> this is this i mean this movie technically counts as a 2018 movie i think it originally premiered in 2017 at a festival somewhere but um uh and i saw it on home video and it's it's it definitely lives up to the name it's a revenge story uh and it really gives you the you know bloody v violent kind of uh violence that you would expect in this kind of movie but right. i also think that it has a lot to say about um certain things that have come to light in society in recent years uh particularly with the me too movement Oh, um, really? Interesting. I think it has a lot to do with that, even though it's not really saying it out loud. Yeah, um, more nuanced. The the so, uh, forewarning you know, for this movie. Tr trigger warning. Yeah, the main plot 
is about this girl who is like in a relationship with this guy who is pro basically promising her that he's going to help her getting to Hollywood. Um, and then he like takes her out to this place in the middle of nowhere. And then a couple of his friends show up and they're all going to go on a hunting trip. And he ends up going off somewhere and leaving her with his two friends. And one of them rapes her. And, and the other guy that's there just lets it happen. And then when her boyfriend, quote unquote, comes back, he basically is mostly concerned with covering it up. And so they try and kill her and leave her for dead. And and then it becomes a survival story slash her, you know, uh, coming after them to kill their asses. But, nice. you know. And, you know, with those three guys, I feel like it represents the, you know, the perpetrators, the people that knew it was happening and didn't do anything, and the people that tried to hide it, you know, like, and, and, of, and it's very violent. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, it sounds like it would be. It's like intensely violent. Like, if you're not, if you're squeamish, you probably shouldn't watch this movie. <laughs> But wow, it's that kind of intensely violent. Holy it's, cow. It's pretty intense. <laughs> but uh, I thought it was a really... And, and it definitely... It does have some times where it veers into, like, um, certain parts might go beyond what might be realistic. But uh, I, I still felt like I was invested throughout the whole thing. and Definitely. It, it kept me... Uh, on the edge of my seat as you as i could stereotypically say but you know it's probably the best right. way to describe it um so so that's that number seven i have the favorite Woo! an oscar nominee <laughs> <laughs> there it is i just thought that i mean i thought this movie was really entertaining and witty and uh unique it had great character work great character writing and acting um the cinematography was amazing and the the production design was like top notch um they really captured the time period well nice and uh and it definitely went in directions that i didn't see coming like it's just and it's somehow i i guess it's based on real people like i don't know oh, how really? true it is but apparently it's like somewhat based on true events so that's kind of interesting which makes it even more like wow i'm kind of surprised like it almost makes it more impressive how good the character writing is and the character arcs because it doesn't seem like something that would come from real life you know <laughs> right like there are like the characters all change like there's three main characters and they all are not the same at the end of the movie as they were at the beginning. And you, it might even like change how you feel about them as you get, you know, to the end, which is not really something that you see that often. I feel like, um, where like, you know, you might like one character at the beginning and dislike another. And then suddenly at the end, you find that you feel the opposite way for both of them. <laughs> right. But, uh, and uh, one the one of the main actresses um, for that movie won Best Actress, which is pretty cool. Um, I thought she was. That's the, nice. I thought she was the best one, so I was like, cool. <laughs> but uh, so after that, I have Mission Impossible Fallout. <laughs> oh, it's so good! I love that movie. <laughs> I I. Uh, I, I've contended before that I, I don't really care what you think of Tom Cruise in real life. The man cares about making entertaining movies, and the Mission Impossible franchise is a bastion for quality, practical action movie filmmaking that we don't really see the likes of oh, very often anymore. Truly. In a year where Infinity War came out, that still might not be the best action movie. 
It might be Mission yeah. Impossible. Honestly. <laughs> Mission Impossible is just like... I, I like to describe it as a Rue Goldberg machine of chaos and suspense. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm, like, slightly, like, not naive. I, I don't think that's the right way to put it. But, like, even though I, I, like, look at it and I'm like, that should have been obvious. There are twists that happen in Mission Impossible that I just don't see coming and still just make me go, <gasps> you know? And I'm just like, like, oh, oh shit like that you know like that kind yeah. of it just and i my experience with it was just perfect because uh so if any of you followed the movie pass shenanigans uh mm -hmm. this me and lexi had movie pass and oh, uh oh yeah and so they were being it was right around when mission impossible came out that they were being really shitty and like just not allowing uh people to see like the blockbuster movies so it was like a final up yours to movie pass me and lexi <laughs> before we canceled our account bought a ticket with the movie pass to see uh a different movie that wasn't mission impossible but went to mission impossible anyway with it because <laughs> it doesn't like scan a ticket it just like uploads funds to your account for the movie um and we just bought mission impossible for it with it anyways <laughs> and uh so we went and saw it and there was no one in the theater. It was just us two. It was great. <laughs> it was just you and the movie. I loved it. Yeah. It's a... That movie, like... I I mean, I've heard some people say that they found the parts in between the action scenes to not be to their liking. But I don't know. I felt like it had a really brisk pace. I felt like it carried from scene to scene really well and it just kept definitely held my attention oh yeah it just is non-stop and it's great yeah and as a person who really like enjoys the movie franchise it definitely has some like fan service bits like to you know make you feel good which you know i i thought were um tastefully done i liked them I thought yeah. it was cool. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, don't be sleeping on Mission Impossible. I don't care. Not at all. Just, it's it's one of the best action franchises ever made. And I, I can't believe we're going to be getting... If you're not in by now, what are you doing? We're going <laughs> to be getting two, two years in a row in, like, next. I think Tom Cruise tweeted, like, we're going to be getting one in 2020 and 2021 or something no like kidding. that. So, so hey, we've still got more. Wow, that's awesome. I am ready. <laughs> My body is ready. Oh. And so anyway, at number five, I have Won't You Be My Neighbor? The documentary about Mr. Rogers. Yeah, I want to see that too. And, I hear it's also pretty emotional. And admittedly, and it's awesome. the only documentary I saw from 2018. But uh, it made my life better, so I don't care. It's great. <laughs> That's awesome. It's, it's like, I mean, both, you know, Mr. Rogers himself, you know, and the life he lived and how well this documentary is made. It just really made me feel great after I watched it, you know, like, right. I felt better about humanity. <laughs> Which is awesome, because Mr. Rogers is awesome. Yeah, he, it's... He was... It, it was kind of a man. flashback for me too. I was like remembering a bunch of things that I was like, "Oh my god, this was locked away in the back of my brain for years." <laughs> I watched this stuff. <laughs> I right. grew up on it. You know, he had a he had a part in. I think he probably had a part in molding my brain. <laughs> oh, absolutely, without question. Yeah. For for me, at least, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah. Like, There's no doubt about that for me. Definitely, definitely watch that documentary. It's yes a joy. And at number I four, love a good wholesome documentary. Yes, wholesomeness is good every now and then. We need it. But at number four, I have Avengers: Infinity War. <laughs> yes, because that I can't help one. it. <laughs> really, it is so. That's good. your number one. I, I mean, I, I definitely, I can respect viewing. that. 
yeah. Avengers Infinity War is not only it's not only good on its own, which is, you know, it's worth praising, but it's it's I feel like it's really worth praising that it had 10 years of movies to build it up and it somehow lived up to it and even maybe surpassed expectations. Oh, you know. definitely. I, like, I think it absolutely surpassed expectations. And that people are me. like looking forward to end game and being like, well, it has big shoes to fill. <laughs> like, yeah. That infinity War turned out that well that people would be like, man, is it going to be as good in, as infinity war? I don't know. <laughs> right. I know it's going to be tough. It really is. Yeah. And that, like I said, that movie just gets better with repeat viewings. Like I, one of my favorite things to do is watch it like where Thanos is the good guy and not the bad guy. <laughs> and watching it from that perspective is fascinating. Like just makes it so mm. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, and, and it's like, uh, Infinity War is a, it was a cultural event obviously um, right but i feel like it was also just amazing that it turned out as well as it did <laughs> oh definitely like, yeah it should remember, not have been as good as it was i remember thinking that when i saw the first avengers you know i was like how did they put this many characters this many main characters into one movie and it turned out this well and then infinity war <laughs> comes around and they somehow managed to make that work. Yeah, and definitely. It's just like wow, like props. I don't like for all the you know the shit that you could fling at at uh, Disney and and big corporate movie companies. Like when when it comes down to it, they know how to make a good movie to you know to serve its purpose. <laughs> I feel like. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, like you said, I just don't know if there's any better way that it could have turned out. It's just that good. Like it. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy. And the and it's just the the only thing of its kind. Like it's just there is nothing in this world like that movie yeah. at all. Yeah. And it's unbelievable that it works. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Okay, I, I actually don't know this because I didn't see. Was it nominated for Best Special Effects? Please tell me yes. I think it was, yeah. Okay. I'm pretty the sure. The fact that well, it did... I, I don't even know if it was I'm nominated. I'm not sure, actually. Because but the fact that it didn't win, I'm pretty sure it didn't win. I think the... But it is I, criminal. I'm pretty sure that Black Panther was nominated for Best Visual Effects. So I... <laughs> Which is ridiculous. Not ridiculous, I mean, but like... In, I mean, like, Infinity War has Thanos, who is a 100% CGI creature, and if you are <laughs> person, character, yeah. being, if you will, and without knowing that, like, you can see just by, like, watching the movie that he is, that there's a lot of CGI to him, but the way that he's animated, he looks real. Like, he could be real in that world, and it's yeah. just unreal how definitely yeah. one of the most convincing cg characters i think that we've ever seen probably you know it's like him and like caesar from the planet of the apes movies oh yeah definitely and like although i mean i haven't seen it in years but i remember davy jones looking pretty real back in the second pirates of the caribbean movie i did too and i watched that one recent fairly recently and i thought it held up pretty well i know some people don't think so but i think that the cg holds up really well personally yeah it's been but, a minute since i've watched those ones though yeah but uh but i mean they're definitely getting better at it when they want to <laughs> like, definitely yeah. Meanwhile, sh it's really incredible. What they can meanwhile, do Warner Brothers comes out with Justice League. Oh, <laughs> uh, I like Justice League. It's not a good movie, but I like it. <laughs> yeah. uh, it is not a good movie, though. Definitely not. And Steppenwolf definitely, you know, looks like, horrible. He gets bitch slapped by Thanos on a oh, bad yeah. day. <laughs> like, uh, anyway, absolutely. Yeah, Infinity War was a big deal, and it, it deserved it. Yes. So, without question. 
at number three. Here we go. Bum, bum, bum. I have Suspiria. Oh, right. Crickets. <laughs> yep. It's a uh, horror movie that's a remake of an old movie from the 70s. And it was produced by Amazon Studios. Really? Uh, and it's starring Amazon. Dakota Johnson from the Fifty Shades of Grey movies. I know. I know. But she's actually good. Um, and it stars Tilda Swinton as as uh, multiple characters. I do like Tilda Swinton. She, she gives multiple performances in this movie. <laughs> really? And, uh, and there's some other actors in it too, but like, oh, like, I don't want to give much away about this movie because I kind of, I went into it knowing very little about it and I was just like sucked in by it. Um, right. I'll tell you, it's about, um, it's about witches. Witches? Witches are the horror subject matter of this movie. Um, it's, you know, where the, I guess the, you know, more traditional horror aspect comes in, but it's, it's cinematography and editing and lighting were all so unbelievably good. Like it's criminal that they weren't nominated, (laughs) but it's to be expected because the Oscars don't nominate horror movies. Never. So. Which is weird because horror is such a good medium for telling interesting stories. And yeah. I don't know. And this movie, I mean, this movie's fucked up. <laughs> Let's just say that. Like, it's it's a, it's not a movie that I would watch with my parents. But <laughs> it's a, oh man, it's so engrossing. And right. It just pulls you in, like, and and you kind of are are I don't know captured by it, <laughs> and and it's a uh, it's definitely like a cinematic movie. Like you can tell that the people who were making it were artists who wanted to you know make something as good and as like standing out uh as possible you know like they wanted i feel like they were trying to make something unique right Um, excuse me it's hard to talk about something when you don't want to say hardly anything about what happens in it (laughs) yeah you can't spoil it yeah no i feel you but oh man like i mean if you so this one and my number two pick are movies that are a lot more like of a slow burn kind of experience. Like, if I like those. If you're not into slow movies, then this might not be your jam. But if you are, oh man, <laughs> it's good. Um, and it's you know, and it's the kind of the movie that will make you think. You know, makes you want to like examine what it is that you watched definitely so at number two i have first reformed with ethan hawk oh my was... god it's ethan hawk <laughs> which is also in amazon you probably don't get that joke do you <laughs> uh no i don't think uh, I do. so it's from family guy and they make in family guy they were making fun of how like they said something about how like all Asians look the same, <laughs> and and then they made fun of oh, God. Americans saying that by saying they probably think the same thing about us. And it was this Asian guy running from different Americans going, "Oh my God, it's Ethan Hawke," <laughs> 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 because they all look the same. <laughs> so that, I I think it's hilarious. But... Uh, well, speaking of Ethan Hawke, uh, he I feel like he gave like the performance of his career in this movie. Really? He was so good, it's criminal that he wasn't nominated for Best Actor in the Oscars. Um, Like, I mean, this movie could have been nominated for many categories. It only got nominated, I think, for Best Original Screenplay. Um, 
but it's that's like, it, huh? It could have been nominated for cinematography and lighting and best actor and I would argue best picture. Um, but wow, it's like, and it's also you know, it's a slow burn movie and it deals with really like dark subject matter. And here's the thing, <laughs> it's kind of a Christian movie that's good really <laughs> me i mean and i'm saying this as a christian you know I, I i have christian beliefs and i i'm not really a fan of christian movies most of the time i i tend right. to think that they're a bit too preachy and um focused more on us like basically telling a sermon through movie form than making a good movie right um, and I feel like this movie, this movie does have messages to tell, but I feel like it does it in a way that's very um, reasonable, and it doesn't get in the way of telling a really compelling character story. Um, Interesting. It's a like it's a character study kind of movie, you know, like it's very focused in on Ethan Hawke's character most of the time, and. Huh his inner turmoils that he's going through. Um, and it's a really, it's a pretty quiet movie. Like it, it doesn't have a lot of music, you know, it, if, if any, really like beyond just what's, whatever's happening in the world, like, you know, you know, diegetic music versus non diegetic music. It's mostly right. diegetic stuff. Um, but it's, I mean, it's about this guy, Ethan Hawke, who's a priest at this old, old church that's basically just become a a tourist site, like for people to just come and look at because it was it was like significant at its time and it was it was uh, used to help smuggle slaves. Uh, but Ethan Hawke is, you know, he's this guy that's getting kind of old and he's dealing with um personal demons and and um but he's also trying to deal with things that other people are confronting him with and it's and it's kind of rocking his his worldview and and maybe and, and one of the things that I love about this movie too is that you know it never kind of takes the side of any one character like there will be times where the main character I feel like is correct in in his you know approach to things but then there are times where the people that are maybe you know sort of opposing him right the, that they're correct in a certain moment but then they might be wrong in another one huh. um, and I feel like that's so rare to see in movies where like they don't try and make it look like one character is right and one is wrong all the time you know like yeah. this movie is very sure. realistic in that people can be right in one moment and they can be wrong in another depending on their own weaknesses you know and it talks about like um faith and christianity in a way that is um i feel like very fair and and uh, done in a tasteful way that doesn't feel like it's, um, you know, like it knows better than you, you know. Right. Um, which, or like, like it's only for people who are already Christians, which I feel like, which I personally feel like a lot of Christian movies are. I feel like it's preaching to the choir most of the time. Right, um, for sure. But this movie also, it, it does have an ending that maybe doesn't leave you satisfied. <laughs> um, at least, like, if you're wanting what you think you would typically want from a movie ending. Um, it's the kind of ending that you have to think about it, you know. Like, and it's it's a little bit, uh, it's, it's not going to hold your hand. But it's such a like arresting movie like i i i think it's one of the most unforgettable ones that i've that i de it's definitely one of the most unforgettable movies of the year like i 
I won't, you know, be forgetting about this one anytime soon. Very cool. And obviously, based on the things I've said, it's not for everybody. Definitely. <laughs> but, you know, if it sounds like your jam, definitely check it out. For sure. Oh, sorry, one more note. It One of the things that it talks about is um, climate change. Like, Interesting. And I feel like it does it in a really um, reasonable way as well. Like, it's it talks about it in a way where... I feel like it 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 brings things to your attention and tries to challenge you with it and and even like brings up the notion that there are, you know, people, you know, often Christians will just blow off the idea of even thinking about it when you even bring it up, you know. Right. And and, and it kind of puts that into part of the conversation about it, which kind of, I feel like, got me to think about it more. So I thought it was uh, really effective in a lot of ways. But at the end of the day, I and I'm going to say a line that I already wrote for my Instagram review, I know what I like, and I love Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, that's number one, huh? Wow. Yep. <laughs> that's saying something. That's my number one, because it's just so good in every way. <laughs> like, Wow. It's, you know, in every technical aspect, you know, it's, it's top tier uh, in the characters and the story and the and just the overall enjoyableness of watching it is so high for me it's like it's clearly the my favorite and thing thing that i mo enjoyed most in the year you know? definitely oh but just by how you've talked to me about it yeah. yeah, it's pretty clear. I've already seen it case. three times in theaters, and I kind of want to see it another time. Like, Wow. And I don't see movies in theaters that often, or, you know, repeat viewings that often. Like, um, this movie's just, it appeals to me it's just aesthetically that great. and in the kind of, you know, way that I enjoy characters and, and, it's just flawless execution of its story and themes and and character arcs and and the the way that the animation is like not only like does it have a unique look but they use like camera techniques in it that you could only do in animation but then there are right. also like ways in which they use it that almost like is reminiscent of like live action action scenes like there's this but it's like maybe something that you wouldn't even be able to do in live action like there's scenes where someone will be fighting on the stairs and then the camera will move up the stairs as they're going up it and like it's just so dynamic right and, and the just sound design very unique and great animation and all yeah. the way around great and like the, the sound design and the music choices, like both in the, you know, chosen songs and also the original soundtrack just is perfectly fitting for like every scene. Except, I mean, I know that some people were taken out of a couple scenes a little bit by using like a licensed song during a emotional scene, but I didn't feel like it really took away from it for me. Um, really? That's I, good. And I just... I loved that it was Spider-Man, but yeah. it was a new character that I didn't really know much about, and they like captured the spirit of what Spider-Man means, and like delivered the idea that like you know anyone can be a hero, you know everyone's capable of greatness, you know, and you Good. just got to do it in your own way, you know, and 
and they got me like you know they had peter parker in there and they had gwen stacy in there and they had miles morales and they really got you to understand who he was and and the connections that he had with his family and his friends were just so believable like and you just couldn't i i just couldn't help but you know be moved by it when <laughs> when they clearly wanted me to be they they did it sh they sure did it well <laughs> like oh yeah wow that's awesome yeah i i saw it and i was like you know i think this might be my favorite movie of the year but i'll have to see some other things first but it's still it just it, it's got to be it that's the one yeah wow that's a lot of high praise <laughs> Don't it mean to like hype I, it up I might too much. That movie. <laughs> you'll you'll probably like it, you know. Probably. I do love Spider Man, so uh probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean Spider Man's always been one of my favorite characters too, and this was just like it's like I think the best Spider Man movie there's probably ever been, so So that's that. Wow. Well, uh, you pretty much named all the best movies that I've that I loved of this last year as well. So I don't really have anything particular to add on to that. <laughs> that was all pretty great. Infinity War was definitely my favorite movie. Some honorable mentions for me would probably be. Oh, and I really liked Incredibles 2 a lot. I thought it was yeah. great. I don't I did, think it's as good as the first. But I did enjoy I, it. I do like it a lot. I I had I had fun with that movie. Right. I just didn't want it to beat Spider Verse. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and you and a lot of other people, and thankfully it didn't, which is great. So. Yeah. Oh. Let's see what else. I mean. Whew. Well. Uh, quick plug. Uh, I saw Alita, Battle Angel recently and i thought it was really cool and i think more people should go see it and support it um and i i kind of want to see the sequel you should definitely go into it knowing that it's the beginning of a franchise <laughs> so you're not surprised that there's a uh sequel bait at the end <laughs> but right i thought it was really enjoyable and goofy and silly and fun <laughs> But also, like, you know, I mean, it it had heart, you know. It wasn't just, you know, trying, it wasn't trying to be silly all the time, but it, it definitely had its moments where it was like, that was, that was like, you know, anime-ish or cartoon-ish or, or whatever, but it was kind of charming. You know, so. Right. Yeah, I, I've... I've heard mixed things about it, but it, I mean, it certainly looks beautiful. The movie itself. So it, it creates an interesting world. I'm, I'm interested in learning more about it. I might just look into the source material. I don't know. Cause I've heard right. it's good. That's part of why I want to see the sequels because I've heard how good it gets later on in the manga. So I'm like, cool let's let's do it <laughs> oh yeah no kidding it'll give robert rodriguez something to do <laughs> yeah right and and maybe you know you know let james cameron divert some of his energies away from four avatar movies uh, <laughs> yeah that's happening about seven years too late or I guess I guess it's not that bad. Maybe more like five years too late. Yeah, it's kind of weird though. Like four of them. Like I know, right? I know it was the biggest movie in the world, but at the time, yeah, pe people are gonna feel differently about it when another one comes out. I say that though, and Frozen Two is gonna be coming out this year. So yep, let's see how that does. <laughs> Because that one did really uh, well. Yeah, Frozen 2 is coming out soon. Oh. Captain Marvel is coming out soon. And you know what I know someone, that comes out in like two weeks. You know what I just had pointed out to me is that Avengers is coming out a month after that. 
I know. Isn't that nuts? And then that what's is. else? What else is that same month? What is that same month? <laughs> what is it? Game of Thrones. Oh, it's Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Yeah. This is this. This should be a good year. This should be good. A good year. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, well if uh if you don't have anything else um yeah i think that seems like a good place to wrap up all right well uh wow yeah that was uh 2018 was a pretty good year i gotta say yeah good times i had good times um definitely wanting to move forward into new territories this year but uh I I definitely feel like uh both in my personal life and in other things, you know, there were good uh good advances made. Um So oh, if absolutely. If you want to uh see the things that we do outside of this podcast i have a youtube channel that is just my name jacob westberg and i have another one uh that's just for gaming videos it's called jake plays games um it's a good one he makes funny overwatch videos <laughs> i'm uh i'm planning on putting out some vods soon i finally figured out how to get the settings correct and i recorded nice. some pretty good games with with a friend the other uh last night so that should be fun. Uh, but I've got a number of projects coming down the pipeline. You know, hopefully I can get them done in the next century. Uh, right. But uh, I'm also on Twitter. Uh, my handle is Jake Makes Movies. Uh, I changed that so because uh, I didn't like the way it sounded before. So. Yes. And, I would uh, say it's a good one. Dylan, are are you wanting to plug anything yourself? Um, normally, maybe, but at this moment, I just uh, don't have the time or the resources to be Twitch streaming like I would like to be. But uh, I mean, pretty soon that might change. We'll see. Um, we just are mm -hmm. kind of saving some money for our house. But uh, yeah, I'm also on Twitter. Uh, my my handle is just script man 17 i don't tweet a lot but um i do like a lot of tweets and i uh i roam and i wander <laughs> so <laughs> but uh you also have an instagram now i do and i don't remember the handle for that because it's i because made it's a mistake and, <laughs> yeah it's just long and weird because i didn't think of it when i was here, here. Uh, making one we'll see see if i can find it it's uh, like dylan dot belcher dot one four four or something like that uh, it is Dylan dot Belcher B E L C H E R dot one four four. Yep, that is it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thank you for joining us, everybody. Yeah, uh, and uh, thank you for joining me, Dylan. It was you a bet. good talk. Uh, we should play. We should play games together more. Definitely, and we, can talk we need more. to. But we gotta we, we gotta try and save some stuff for the podcast too. So, <laughs> for but, sure. Uh, oh, another 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 note. We also have a Twitter for the podcast. It's just planned rambling. Yes. Uh, and if we you do. want to send us questions, you can send them there. And we will uh, look at them and answer them in the next episode. Uh, if you leave anything for us. Yeah, we do. We would like to get questions. That would be yes. interesting. If anybody wants has any questions in particular, regardless of what they are, we will answer. Literally, them. ask us anything. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an open book. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, uh, again, thank you for joining us, and uh, we will talk to you again next time. Indeed. All right. Bye. Bye.